Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proenza and today we're going to talk about week 2 practice problems of arrays. So basically in this video we will be working with three problems, uh, hours, no vowels and password. And during these problems we're going to understand a little bit better how arrays work, how can we manipulate it using for loops, how can we create functions and return those values. So it's pretty good to practice before doing the lab and the problem set. These problems are optional so you don't need to submit it, you won't receive grade for it, but we highly recommend you doing because you can practice and be more comfortable with the concept. If you have any question and you want to have some extra help, you can check the description below and join our free Discord community. In there, you can connect with people from around the world that are doing CS50 and other courses, as well as having some support during your learning process. Without further ado, let's just start. So basically, in this problem, hours, we're going to practice using arrays. Uh, array will be in a parameter to our function. We're going to add values in a loop and we're going to have an integer division typecasting. So basically, let's understand how it works and then we can see these goals. I will let you read the problem, all right, but I'm going to highlight here the main ideas. Basically in this program we will complete a function that calculates based on user's input a total number of hours or an average number of hours across a given number of days. So let's see this example in here. Basically we already have some code and we will take a look uh, soon how it will work but CS50 will ask us, the code will ask us how many weeks we took and basically in here the user type it in three and then it will keep asking you how much time you spend in each week. So for example here in week three, in week zero we had we spent three hours in week one we spent seven hours week two ten hours so we're gonna store these hours in an array for each week then our goal is to return all the total number of hours that the student spent or the average hours per week so depending of if the user type in t we're gonna return the total hours if the user type in a we're gonna return the average hours and our goal is creating this function that will calculate the total or the average all right so let's see what we have in our code here if you scroll down you can download the source code by getting this link so we have in here I'm gonna create a directory called hours and I'm gonna enter in this directory hours and then I'm gonna download the file so here if we expand we have an hours folder and here we have hours.c so let's understand what we have here so far basically we're creating here the prototype of our function that it will return as a float and the name of the function is calculate hours and here we're receiving an array that it's an integer uh, integer for weeks and a char for the output okay then we're being asked here we have an integer that it's a variable for weeks and we're asking how many weeks we we took at CS50 then with the number of weeks we're creating the array this int array that has name hours all right and we're doing a for loop so for each iteration we're gonna ask the user for a integer and this integer will be the hours we spent at each particular week so this is exactly what we saw in here this week zero three hours seven and ten all right once we loop through this uh this weeks that we took we're gonna create this array with the hours that we spent during the cs50 course and we have here this char output here that is a variable and we have a do while loop so basically we're asking for the user if the user wants to know the total hours or the average hours per week if the user doesn't type in capital t or capital a or t or a because here we have a function that it's converting this to uppercase if the user doesn't give us these two letters we're going to ask the user again so once we know what is the letter we know that the user wants or the total amount or the average and then this is where we're going to work basically we have to create this function here all right so let's understand what do we have here in our hands so we have the hours array that have the length of how many weeks we already take uh, in the calculate hours function we need to sum all the hours that the array stores so in here for example we're gonna sum 3, 7 and 10 so in total we're gonna have 20 hours and then in the calculate function we need to check if the user is asking the total or the average if the user is asking us the total we're gonna return the, the sum we did or if the user is asking us the average we're gonna get the total and divide by how many weeks we have all right this is pretty much what we need to do so let's just start here as I mentioned we have this integer array here that it's storing the hours so first we're gonna loop through this uh, this array and we're gonna sum all the hours we have inside so here I'm gonna have a float for example actually an int because we know that hours will be an integer so int total and I'm gonna start with number zero all right because in the next step I want to look through this list and I want to add the hours for each week so this is exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna do for int i equals to zero i less than weeks because we're receiving here the variable weeks and we know that our hours has length weeks all right and I want to change the value of i by adding one and what am I gonna do in each iteration I'm gonna add the value of our element in the array into our total uh, variable so here I'm gonna do total plus equals oops 
plus equals, and we need to access the element of our array. So how can we do this? We normally say the name of our array, we use the, the square bracket, and we're going to use the variable i, because this variable i here will change in each iteration. So first we're going to get the first element, then the second element, so on, until we get the last element. So this is the notation, all right? Once we do this, now we need to check what is the output, if the user wants us the total or the average. So we're going to check for t or a. So here we're going to do if output is equals equals to t, this means that the user wants the total, so we're going to return total, all right? And then here, but one thing that is important, I, I will go to this later. So if the user give us t, we're going to return the total, otherwise we're going to return the, we're going to return total divided by weeks because we want the average, so here total divided by weeks, all right? We might have an issue here because we created this variable total equals to an int and our function is expecting to receive a float, so here we need to cast, so here I'm gonna do float, all right? So let's see if it's working, let's take a look. So if I do here make hours, okay, we have a bug, so here a uh, result of comparison against a string literal is specified, so let me see, here we are receiving if output equals equals t, I'm using double quotation mark, I believe here it should be single quotation mark, let's double check. Great, that was the, our issue. So now if I do backslash hours, numbers of week taking. So let's suppose I'm taking three weeks, all right? Now it's asking for how many uh, hours I spent in the first week. I'm going to put here three, for example, then seven, and then ten. So these weeks we're seeing here, it's basically our first loop. This four, actually let me do the following. Let's use the debugger. I think here it's a good example to use the debugger. So I'm going to do debug 50 hours. And let's understand what is going on inside of our code. So make hours and I'm going to put a breakpoint here and I'm going to do debug 50 hours. So the debugger basically will tell us what is going on in our code. So once we run the debugger, it will appear for us this page. So basically the debugger will show us what is going on in our code and will show each line so we can understand what's happening. So let's see the first scenario. Here we have the variable weeks and we're going to ask the user. So once I click in this button, it's asking us the number of uh, weeks we're taking. So I'm going to put here three. So now that we have this here, our variable weeks has value three and you're going to see that we're going to create a variable called hours and the size will be three. So now we can see that hours has three elements. We're going to, we'll have three elements right now. It is all empty. Here we have some random numbers. And now we're going to add the hours into our element. So here we're doing a for loop and we're going to loop through the all the elements we have in our list. So here for hours on position zero, we're going to ask the hours for the first week. And here I'm going to say seven, for example. Then as we can see here in the first element of our array, we have here the number seven. Now we're going to loop again and we're going to add here the second element. So I'm going to say here five, for example. So now we have here in the second element of our array, the number five, and then we're going to ask for the final element. And here I'm going to say eight, for example. All right, so here the three elements we have in our array are now completed. So we're done with this for loop and we're going to create here a variable called output. Right now this is empty, but our do while loop will handle it. So basically here the output will ask us for a char. So as we can see here, it's asking us enter T for total hours, A for average hours per week. But let's suppose I put the letter C. C, it's not T or A. And this is what the, the while loop will do. We're going to continue doing this loop while we don't give the correct value. So here, is C different than T? Yes. And C is different than A? Yes. So we're going to loop again. And we're going to ask the user again for an output. Until the user give us T or A. In this case, I'm going to give T, all right, and let's see what's happened. So now we're going to work with our calculate hours, all right? So in here, we have a variable called total, and we have our hours, our weeks, and our output, that is the variable T, the letter T. So we're going to create the variable total, and we're going to let this equals to zero, and now we're going to loop through our hours array again. But instead of adding values, now we're going to sum in our total variable. So now we're going to get the first element, so what is hours on position zero? As we can see in here, hours on position zero, it won't show, but it's our number seven. As we can see in here, it's our number seven. So once I click this button, it, the total will be zero plus seven. So total will be equal to seven. Then we're going to loop again, and now we're going to get hours on position one. And we know that hours on position one is five, so our total will be seven plus five, that it's 12. And finally, we're going to loop through the last element, and we're going to add the, the number eight. So 12 plus eight, it's 20. And now here we have our total. Now that we have our total amount, we're going to check what is the output. So here is our 
our output equals to t? And yes, because our output is exactly t. So we're going to return our total amount in here as a float. So it will, we're going to return 20.0. And as we can see here, we're displaying 20.0. What if now I'm going to run our terminal without the debugger just to check the average. So here, if I run dot forward slash hours, and I'm going to put the same numbers, three weeks, seven, five, and eight. And here I want the average, so I'm giving the letter A. And now it's giving us six hours. So it's giving 20 divided by three, I believe. Actually, not 20 here. It's giving us, yes, 20 divided by three, and it's giving us six. All right, let me double check one thing. So as I suspected, here is something wrong, because when we divide here, the average shouldn't be 6, because 18 divided by 3, that it's 6, not 20. So basically here we have to cast again our float. All right, so let's let's see if it's something changed. So make hours, dot forward slash hours. So now if I run exactly the same things, now we're getting 6.7, that is what we're expecting. All right, so if we run check 50, we're supposed to see all green. And then we're going to move to the next problem. So let's see. And that's it. Great. Now let's go to no vows. Well, now let's work with no vows. Basically, in this problem, we're going to practice using strings, using command line arguments, and write a program entirely from scratch. So here, let's see what we are going to do. The part of the command line argument, we're going to use what we saw during the lecture about the sys uh, library, where we're going to get the argv, that it's a list, and argc. But don't worry, we're going to work a little bit more on that. So I will let you read the problem, and I will tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. So in this problem, we will convert a word, which we will input at the command line uh, to a corresponding word with numbers replacing vowels. So let's see this example here that we're seeing in the video. So we're going to call the word, the, our code with another parameter after the dot forward slash name of the file. So if we don't, we, if we only run here with dot forward slash name of the file, we're going to display a message. Otherwise, for example, here we're sending hello. We're going to convert the word hello with replacing the letter E and O with numbers. All right, and so on. So let's uh, get here the, the distribution code and then we can start working with that. So here I'm going to do make there no vows, cd no vows, and we're going to download this file. So if we open it up in here, we will be able to see our distribution code. And basically we don't have anything, it's just telling us a little bit the pseudocode of what we have to do. So let's say step by step. We're going to, our program must accept a single command line argument, which will be the word we're going to convert. So as we saw, we're going to send hello, for example. So we're going to run our code and then we're going to send the word hello. If the program is executed without any command line arguments or more than one, uh, we're going to print an error message, all right, and we're going to return the value one. So this means that if the user doesn't give us only one word, we're not going to execute the rest of our code. That's why we're going to return one. All right. Otherwise, if the user gives us exactly one command line argument, we're going to call the function replace and we're going to build this replace function. Basically, this, refla this replace function will receive a string as an input and we're going to re return a string as an output. This function will change the following vowels to numbers. So we're going to change the letter A to 6, E to 3, I to 1, O to 0, and U. We're not going to change to anything. The input parameter for the replace function will be the argument from the command line. And how can we access this argument? We're going to use the argv on position 1. Remember the argv is a list, all right? And the return value is the converted word. The main function will then print the converted word followed by a backslash n to go to the next line. And here they're telling us to use the switch statement. And we're going to see in the future an animation that explains a little bit how it works. So let's break it down into more pieces, all right? So first, let's work with creating our function and checking if we are receiving a command line argument or not. So the first thing we're going to work in here is to check how many arguments we're sending in the command line. So what we have to do, we have to run here no vows. All right. And we need to send a word, for example, hello. If the user doesn't give us one extra parameter in the command line besides the name of the file, we're going to run a wrong message. All right. So in here, we're going to check how many arguments we have. But before we do, let's see what is argc. OK, so here I'm going to print f argc and I believe it is an integer. So here argc. And let's use the debugger. So here I'm going to do make no vows, make no vows and we're gonna run the debugger so debug 50 no vows all right and here i'm gonna put a breakpoint and let's see so what can we see in here our rgc will be a number all right and the rgv will be a list here if we check our list has only one element right now so far rgc will be the length of our list that has named rgv 
So here, our RGB list only contain the name of our file, so only contain the novilles.c, all right? If we want to type in something extra, so let me put here, for example, debug50, no vowels, and I put here hello. We're going to see that the RGV, the RGC will be true because then we're going to have two elements in our RGV list, all right? Because we're sending the name of the file and also an extra parameter that is hello. So here we can see the has number true. So we're going to manipulate, we're going to use this RGC parameter to check how many elements we have. If we have a number different than true, this means that the user is not giving us the correct arguments to start the project. So we're going to start working with this condition. All right, so if RGC is different than true, we're gonna print F a message. So wrong command line arguments, for example. All right, and we're gonna stop our code by doing return one. All right, so this will stop our code and we won't print, we won't read the following parts of our program. All right, so let's see if it's working. If I run here, make no vowels, and I run the debug 50 with uh, with the words blue and yellow, for example. Here we're sending three arguments, the name of the file, blue and yellow. So here in our debugger, we're supposed to see RGC equals to three. And here we're, we have this. And we're going to fail because here our if statement is, if RGC is different than two, we're going to enter in this if statement. So here, since our RGC is three, three is different than two. So we're going to print out wrong command line argument and we're going to stop our code. So this is the first step we have to do and we're done with that. All right, now let's see the following. Then once we check if we're receiving only true command line arguments, we're going to create the function replace. All right, the uh, the function replace has a, as we can see in here, the function replace will receive a string as an input and we can see this in here, it takes a string as an input and returns a string as an output. So here we have to prototype our function. So it will be type string because we're going to re return a string and the name of the function is replace and we're going to send a string as a parameter. So here I'm going to say input, for example. All right, so here we have the prototype. Now let's create our function string replace and we're going to receive the string input. Okay, now our string replace, what is going to happen? Basically, we have to get the variable from our command line, okay? And we're going to change the vowels to the corresponding numbers, all right? And to do so, we're going to work with the switch statement. But we're going to see this in a bit. Before we start working with the switch statement, we have to store, we have to create a variable to store the output value, the output variable, the output string of our uh, function. So here I'm going to create a string called output. And I'm going to initialize this, this string with the value input. We cannot initialize this variable uh, as an empty string or something different because here when we're creating strings in C, we have to be very specific in what will be the length of our string. So since the output will be the same string as our input, only changing the vowels, so this means that they are going to have the same length. All right, so here I'm going to initialize saying that our output is equal to our input. But this won't be uh, true forever, right? In our next step, we're going to iterate through our input variable and we're going to change the vowels to the corresponding numbers. So how can we do this? First, let's do a loop in our string. So we're going to do for int i equals to zero. Here I'm going to say i less than this the length of our string. So how can we get the length? Here we can import a library called string dot h and this is string dot h contains a function that gives us exactly the length of the string. So it's the ester length and in parentheses we put what is the string we want to get this, the length here input and I'm going to change the value of i by one. So here the value, the variable i will be the index of each element of each letter of our string. Okay. For each iteration, I'm going to change the case of our letter because here in programming, we need to be certain uh, that we're working with the same case. All right. Because remember that upper a is not equal to lower a. They are, they are read as different things in programming. So we're going to put everything in lowercase and then we're going to check if it's working or not. All right. So here I'm going to create a variable called char c and I'm going to use the to lower function. What the to lower function will do? This function will convert our, our letter into lowercase. All right. And how can we access the letter? Here we're going to use our input string on position i. Okay. So let's print f what we have so far. So let me use here c backslash n and I want to print out input on position i. Okay. Just to make it work here, I'm going to return output 
okay because our function will return a string and output is a string and i'm gonna call our function in here so first i will convert our rgv on position one into a string actually it already is but i want to be explicit in by saying that we want to send this rgv on position one so i'm going to create a string called word and it will store the rgv on position one and then i'm gonna store the call of our function so string result and we're gonna call the function replace and I'm gonna send our word to this replace function. Okay, so let's see what is going on inside of our code. I wanna show you everything that is happening. So here, make no vows. And then here we have an issue. All right, here it's telling us that we need to include the ctype.h function because the ctype.h function that contains the function should lower. So here we're gonna include ctype.h and that's pretty much what we need. Let's see if now we have no bugs, great. So I'm gonna do debug 50, no vowels, and I'm gonna send the word hello, for example. Okay, so let's see what is going on. So first, we have here argc that has length true, so we're gonna pass this if statement, because this if statement is not true for our scenario, and we're gonna create the variable word that will be the, the second element of our argv list. And here, remember, since we always start counting at zero, the second element will be on position one. And if we see in here, word will be equals to hello. Okay, so here we have the word hello. Great. Now we're gonna call our function replace and we're gonna store in results. So first, let's see what is going on. Here we're creating the variable output and it contains the same value of input. So here, as we can see, output has value hello. Okay, then we're gonna do a loop in our output. So let's see what's going on. On the first iteration, we're changing the character C. So let's see what will be C. C will be the variable H, the letter H, all right? And we're gonna print out this variable and we're gonna see here the variable H. In the next iteration, we're converting the letter E into lowercase and here we're gonna print out E. So if we keep doing this way, we're gonna see that our, this way we're accessing all the letters and we're making them into lowercase, okay? So this way we can compare if we're working with the correct letters or not in order to convert them, the vowels into numbers, okay? So now before we continue, let's understand how the switch statement works. In C, a switch statement is a control flow statement that allows you to specify a number of different cases or branches of code that should be executed based on the value of a variable or expression. The variable or expression is usually compared against a set of constant values known as case labels and the corresponding branch of the code for the first matching case label is executed. Here is an example of a simple switch statement in C. In this example, the variable x is being compared against the case labels 0, 1, and 2. The code in the corresponding branch for the first matching case label is executed. In this case, since x is equal to true, the code in the case true branch will be executed and the program will output x is true. It's worth noting that once a match is found, all statements below it will execute until a break statement is found. If you don't include the break statement at the end of a case block of code, the execution will fall through to the next case, which can lead to unintended behavior. Also, the default block is optional and gets executed when none of the case values matches the switch value. So well, now that we saw how the switch statement works, let's see here this example, all right? And we're gonna kind of work with this example here, this scenario. Basically, we're gonna declare here our the variable we're gonna look for, and in our case, it's the char c. And we're gonna create each case, and then we're gonna manipulate our output string, and then we're gonna break, all right? So we don't look to the other scenarios. So I'm gonna copy here to use in our case. Here, I'm gonna replace the print with our switch statement. Great. So here, instead of n, it will be our variable c. And what is the first case? The first case, we want to check if the letter a, if our char c is equal to our letter a. So here, I'm going to say a. Instead of print f, actually, we can start printing f in here. We're going to change. Actually, let's do what we have to do. Instead of print f, we're going to change the, the letter that we have in our output to be a number. So what are we going to do? We're going to access the output on the position i and we're going to replace with the number, I believe is the number three, but let's double check. So here CS50 is telling us that the letter a will become the number six. So here we're going to change the letter a to number six and then we're going to break. The other case is when we have the letter e and then we're going to change here the output on position i will be equals to our number three. And here I forgot the semicolon. Then we're gonna have another case where we have the variable, the, the letter i, and here for i it will become one. So here output on position i, we're gonna replace the letter i to the number one. And then we need to break. And finally, our last scenario is when we have the letter o. And it's, if it's o, we're gonna replace o by, here output on position i, we're gonna replace our o by zero and we're gonna break. 
All right, and the default, what is our default case? We're gonna remain the same letter that we have. So if we have the letter U, it won't change. If we have the letter D, it will remain D. So here our output will be the same, okay? So here we're gonna say output I will be equal to our char C, all right? This is pretty much what we need to do. Then, once we have all of this, we're gonna return our output and we're basically done with our code. Actually here, we need to print F the result. So since our result is a string, we need to use percent %s backslash n, they tell us to go to the next line and we wanna show here our result. So let's see what is going on. All right, so let's run each line in here and understand what is going on. So I'm gonna do make no vowels and we're gonna do debug 50, no vowels. And I'm gonna say the word uh, happy. Sorry, happy is not a good word. I'm gonna say hello, okay? And let's see if it's working. All right, so here we have the word hello. We already passed the if statement because we're sending two elements in our argv. And we're gonna enter in our replace. The input is hello and our output will store the word hello as well. So now our output is equal to hello, okay? Now we're gonna loop through our inputs. Now we're gonna loop through our hello world. Hello word. So here our variable C is equals to our first letter in lowercase. So since our first letter is hell is H, here we're gonna see C equals to H and we're gonna check. So C H is a case where we have A. So we're gonna follow here. It's not a case where we have A, neither E, neither I, neither O. So we're going to the default. And here in our default, we will replace our output on position zero. So the first letter, we're gonna remain H. We won't be changing anything. Great, so our output still with the value H in here. Oops, in here. Now we're gonna loop for the next letter. So now our next letter C will be the letter E in lowercase. So here C is equals to E. So now we're gonna work with the switch statement. Here we're gonna fall in the line 38 because our letter C is equal to E and we're gonna replace the letter E to the number three. All right, so we're replacing here with the number three. I'm not sure how can we display, you can see in here in uh, orange, the, le the number three instead of E and we're gonna break the loop and we're gonna go to the next iteration. All right, so far so good. Now we're gonna go to the next iteration and the letter C, the, char the variable C will be the letter L in lowercase and we're gonna see in here. So L falls in any of these scenarios, only in the default one, right? Because L is not a vowel. So here we're gonna remain the letter L and here the output will remain the same. Then we're gonna do another iteration. C will be the other L we have in the word hello and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna change to L. And finally, we're gonna go to the last letter, that is the letter O. We're gonna convert into lowercase, so here we have lower O. And we're gonna check if, the, if we fall in each of the scenarios. And here we're gonna fall in our line 46, because the character, the variable C is equal to O. And we're gonna change our O to zero, so take a look in here. Once I click, now we have a zero in our output, okay? And then we break, we finish our loop, and now we're gonna return. So our output now has the vowels converted into numbers. And when we're back here to our to our main function, we're gonna print out exactly what we want. Hello with numbers instead of letters. All right, this is pretty much what we need here for the no vowels. Now let's do the check 50 and see if it's working, okay? And again, if you find found this uh, hard and if you have any questions, please send here on the comment or you can join our free Discord community where you can ask as many questions as you want and you can have our help and help from people around the world. So it's pretty good because you're not alone when you're learning how to code, okay? And CS50 can be pretty difficult if you're trying to learn by yourself. Let's wait for the results and then we're gonna go to the next problem. All right, so we didn't pass all the tests and I have an idea in here. The thing is that we're converting here the characters, but we should remain them in the case they were. We're only gonna change the vowels that we're gonna convert into numbers. So in here, instead of, in the default case, instead of saying C, we're gonna print the input on position I, because here we're gonna be with the same, uh, the, with the same case for the letters. So let's try to do this again. So make no vowels. And if I run in here, dot forward slash no vowels. And if I say hello, all uppercase, we're here saying hello, all uppercase, only changing the, uh, the vowels to numbers. So I think now we're gonna pass, let's see. And that's pretty much what we have to do for this problem. Okay, now let's go to passwords. So now let's work with passwords like I meant. So here the learning goals are practicing iterating through a string like we worked with the previous problem, practicing using the C-type library, something that we already did in the previous problem as well, and using Boolean variables. So what are Boolean variables? Are variables that can be only true or false? 
all right? Here, this video is not allowed for some reason here in my country, but that's don't worry that we don't need to use this in our case. I will simplify the problem. Basically here in our password problem, we're gonna create a function that will iterate through the password that's supplied to it as an argument. So basically we're gonna receive a password, all right? We're gonna input the user for a password as we can see in here. And the function is already made. Now we just need to work with the, this function here to check the password. Basically we need to check if the password contains one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, at least one number and at least one symbol. What they kind of explained to us to do during the problem. Basically, since we have to find at least one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, one number and one symbol, we should create one variable for each one of them and each variable will be true or false. So we're gonna initialize our these four variables to false, all right? And then we're gonna do a for loop in our string checking if this will remain false or if we can change them to true. So we're gonna work with some functions that exist in C type library to check if it's in uppercase, lowercase, if it's a digit or if it's an alphanumeric character, okay? And then once we do these four checkings, we're gonna have the value true or false for the four variables we had in the beginning. And if all these four variables are true, this means that our password is good. If all of that, the, those variables are different, if none of them or if not all of them are true, the else scenario, we're going to return false. This means that our password is not strong enough. Okay, so this is pretty much the idea of the problem. All right, and now we're going to work in here. So let's create a uh, director here called password, cd password, and we're going to download the file. Okay, so let's open up in here and we have our file password. So basically in here, as I said, we already have some function in here. We have the variable, the, the function here called valid and it's expecting to receive a password. Then here in our main function, the first thing we're doing is asking for a password using the get string function. So we're going to get the user input. Then we're going to call the function valid and we're going to send the password as a parameter. And if this function returns us true, we're going to display the message, your password is valid. If the function returns us false, we're going to print that your password needs at least one uppercase letter, lower letter, number and symbol. And our goal here is to complete the boolean function below. So right now we're, we're just receiving the password string and we're returning false, but this won't be enough. Here we have to do, we need to check the possibilities as I said, okay? So let's start creating the four variables that I said. Let's create four variables here for check lower, for example, and I'm gonna initialize with false. Then I'm gonna create another check upper and I'm gonna initialize as false as well. Then another one that I'm gonna say check number and I'm gonna say that it's false. And the final checking we need to do is check symbol and I'm gonna say false as well. Now we're gonna use some functions, but before to use those functions, we need to loop through our string. So we're gonna do something similar to what we did in our no vowels. I'm gonna create here our variable i that we're gonna get the index of each letter. And here I'm gonna say int i equals to zero, i less than star length, so less than the length of our password string. And here, since we're using this star length, we need to include our string.h library. Great. Then we need to increment our variable i++, okay? And now we're gonna work with the functions, okay? So let's see the, the documentation for checking if a letter is in lowercase. As we can see, you can get this PDF if you click in the link below here in the description. You can click here in hint and it will open up for us the manual of CS50. And basically in here we have the is lower function. It will check whether a character is lowercase. So basically we have to import the C type library and basically this function is gonna return us an integer. What will be? Here this function returns a non-zero integer if the, the variable, the character we're searching is a lowercase letter and zero if C, if the character is not a lower letter. So let's see what is going on in here. Basically we have this variable C and we're asking for a character. If is lower, this means that your input is a lower letter. Else here, it means that it's not a lower letter. So this will be our check and we're gonna say is lower and the letter that we're working, okay? So let's see in here, so if, is lower and how can we access the letter of our string? We're gonna use the password. It's ex exactly how we do for arrays on position i. So if this is true, we're gonna change our check lower variable to true. So check lower will be equals to true. Okay, we have a function that is pretty similar to is lower, but instead of is lower, it's called is upper. And it's again from C type library. And here, if we take a look at the example, it will be the same. If is low, is upper return is true, this means that the character is in uppercase. Otherwise, this means that it's not. So we're gonna use this is upper. So if is upper, 
has word on position I, we're going to convert our variable check upper to true. Now we need to check about the number. So we have another function that we can use that has name is digit. So the is digit here check whether character is a digit. And here numbers are basically digits together, right? Actually, we're going to check uh, each character at a time. So we're going to check only for a number from 0 to 9. So we can use this is digit, is digit function. And here it's pretty much the same. If is digit return as true, this means that it's a digit and else otherwise. So here we're going to do the same checking. So if is digit password on position i we're gonna change our check number to true and finally we need to check if we have a symbol so if we have something that is not a letter or a number if we have an exclamation mark and here we have this check whether a character is alphanumeric so here it will it's the same idea how can we use is alpha num is all num actually if this returns true this means that it's alphanumeric and else this means that it's not in our case we don't want an alphanumeric character we want something that is not of that so we're gonna do a, a not true okay so here we're gonna do if not is all num i think this is how it calls is all num on position password i we're gonna change our check symbol to true as well, okay? After we finish looping all of our string, we're gonna check if these four variables are true, because if they are true, this means that our password is valid. So this is our next step. If check lower is equals equals true, and, and here we have to work with and, because four, these four scenarios must be true, and check upper equals equals true, and check uh, number equals equals true, oops, and, check symbol equals equals true so if this all four scenarios are true we're going to return true and otherwise we're going to return false all right this is pretty much what we have to do so let's see if it's working so here make password all right we have a problem here because we didn't import the uh we didn't import the c type so here hash include c type dot h let's see now if i run it again okay now it's working now let's run here password and see if it's going what's going on so if i say here g with capital i i one and exclamation mark we should have here is valid but if i just put here hello it shouldn't be valid because we're missing some things so let's use a debugger and check the and understand what is going on in each line in here so i'm gonna do debug 50 password and let's dig in what's going on so it's gonna ask us for a password and i'm gonna say here gi1 and exclamation mark okay now let's see in here so we have our password here gi1 and exclamation mark and all of our variables are false all right, so we're initializing here all the variables, great. And now we're gonna loop through our password. So basically in here, we're gonna check the first letter that will be the letter G, capital G. So is capital G lower? We're not gonna enter in this if statement because it's in uppercase. And we're gonna check the next if statement. So is capital G uppercase? Yes, so we're gonna enter in the check upper and we're gonna change here the variable to true, all right? Then it's gonna check first digit and if it's an alpha num, and okay, now we're gonna go to the next uh, the next iteration. So now, um, our the next letter we're working with the lower I, all right? Here, lower I. So is lower I? <laughs> lowercase and this is true so we're gonna change our check lower to true okay and here we're changing the parameters and since we found our first scenario that's okay now the third element we're gonna loop is our number one so is number one lowercase no so we're gonna skip this if statement is uh, uh, number one uppercase no so we're gonna skip is number one a digit yes so we're gonna change our variable check num to true so now we're gonna do our final uh, iteration, that it's our last letter. Actually, it will be our last character that is the exclamation mark. So is exclamation mark lowercase? No. Is uppercase? No. Is a digit? No. And is not an alphanumeric? And this is true, it's not, right? Because it's an exclamation mark. So we're gonna change here to true. Then we're done with our for loop. Okay, we check all the letters we have in our scenario and we're gonna do this if statement. Check lower is equal to true, yes. And we have to match those four uh, conditions. Check upper is true, yes. Check number is true, yes. Check symbol is true, yes. So then we're gonna enter in this if statement and we're gonna return true, okay? And we're gonna print out your password is valid. And we're seeing here, all right? This is pretty much what we have to do. You can try it out more if you want, but now let's do the check 50 and see if we got all green.
So as we can see in here, we got our green, so this means that we are correct, all right? Well, this is it. If you have any question, please send here on the comment or join our free Discord community. We're glad to have you there. If you like this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. When you're learning code by yourself, you will face many challenges. You have no one to unblock you, lack of clear path from beginner to being job ready, lack of motivation, lack of community of learners to network with. By being part of our Discord community, you will be able to network with high quality students from around the world. Join our Discord community right now and take a huge step toward achieving your learning goals.